Hi, I'm Dominique from Some Sources Say. So for Women's History Month this March, I wanted to have a little book corner where I discuss the different books on my bookcase which relate to women's history, which is something I am incredibly interested in. So to start us off with, I'm looking today at Game of Queens by Sarah Gristwood. This book came out in 2016 and essentially looks at the women who made 16th century Europe. You know, this was an explosion of female rule, as it says on the book. <laughs> um, had loads of different women ruling sort of Western Europe. So you've got Isabella of Castile, Margaret of Austria, Catherine of Aragon and Berlin, all these incredibly famous names. And Sarah does an amazing job of weaving these stories together, making a really clear narrative and exploring the lives of these women, the effect they had, what they were involved with and what they could do within the patriarchal confines of their society. Um, I really enjoyed this book. And as you can see from the bookmark, I am rereading it yet again <laughs> for another time. Uh, it's helping me on a separate project, which more coming on that soon. And I just think if you wanted to know more about women in 16th century Europe, this is the best place to start. It really does explore a lot of different figures, some that I hadn't really known that much about before reading. And it is just a fantastic read. I can't say that enough. Um, I'm very interested in this topic. I did write my undergraduate dissertation on Catherine Medici, Mary Queen of Scots and Elizabeth I. So, you know, when this book came out, I was absolutely delighted. It was just all my research interests in one area. And I really think you'd enjoy it too. If you want to pick up a copy, you can get it from wherever you get your books, Amazon, Waterstone, local bookshop. It's a great read, you won't regret it. Hello, I'm Dominique from Some Sources Say, and on today's Sunday Book Corner, we are looking at Daughters of Chivalry by Kelsey Wilson Lee. Uh, this book explores the five, five of the daughters of Edward I of England. So admittedly, I did not know much about these women before I read this book. And after reading it, I feel like I know so much more. They all had incredibly interesting lives, stories to tell. They often get overlooked because of their famous father, their famous brother, Edward II. But all these women made impact and, you know, led really interesting lives and you know looking at the way a woman's role was as a daughter of a king in the medieval period in England you know it's very well researched she's really gone into like the archival records you know accounts um for the different women and where they were living at the time and like trying to kind of like gain details that way so you could tell it's been well researched it's really interesting to read she weaves all the sisters stories quite well uh, throughout the book I read it really quickly it was just so enjoyable and you know just so interesting finding out more about these women i mean in the epilogue when you find out more about how things went for them under their brother's reign i mean my dislike of edward ii has continued <laughs> but um it really is a great book so i would you know if you're looking for a book to read about some often forgotten medieval royal noble women this is a good one to start with Hi, today on the Women's History Month Book Corner, I am looking at The Empress by Meg Clothier. This is one of my favourite historical fiction books of all time. I read it a number of times and enjoyed it every single time. It's about Agnes of France, who was married to the heir to the Byzantine Empire. And it's about her life once, she's, once she arrives there as a young bride and everything that happens to her. I don't want to say too much about it obviously I don't want to spoil it but um it's a great look at you know Byzantine politics the court there Byzantine Empire wasn't something I knew a lot about when I first picked this up many years ago um but it's something I've researched since it's incredibly interesting and when I read the historical note at the back of the book it's amazing about how much stuff that when you're reading you think oh that must be fiction it's just too far-fetched but no it really happened so it really is a fantastic book and Meg Clothier is a great author. She's written another historical fiction book I'd also recommend, which is The Girl King, which is about Tamara of Georgia. Um, not quite my favourite compared to like The Empress, but it still is a fantastic book. Both are worth the read. And um, with the craziness that is in 2020, 2021, we need good books to read right now. So if you're looking for a bit of escapism, go for these two. So it's the last book corner for Women's History Month 
and today I wanted to highlight um, a fantastic book which is Theodora. I read this a while back now and it's by Stella Duffy and it explores Empress Theodora of the Byzantine Empire. I actually wrote a blog post about Theodora uh, for my Trailblazers series last year on Women's History Month so you can check that out on my website in the link in the bio. Theodora is a really interesting figure and you know this book does a wonderful job of mixing fact and fiction together to develop this really great story. Um, there is actually a sequel as well which is the Purple Shroud. So the first book sort of is more about kind of Theodora's origin story, I suppose, like her early beginnings, um, all the sort of drama of her early life. And then the second book is very much she's in power, she's with Justinian. Both are brilliant books. It was a great series to read. I really enjoyed them. And I think if you're looking for some new historical fiction to have a read and want to focus on an interesting female figure in history, these are absolutely great. Um, you can get them wherever you normally get your books, Amazon, Waterstones, local bookshop. So um, yeah, I would highly, highly recommend.